featuring Lil Nas X. I'm just improvising Buster here. I don't know. Scruggs. Yeah, bless the Scrug. Newtown Road. Medellin Town Road. Podcast number what? Six. Medellin Podcast. It's actually seven minus one, but same as six. Taught him everything Woo. he knows. <laughs> Welcome to episode six of the Medellin Podcast. Yes, sir. Today, we have Michael Hernandez on my left, in the middle, and I got Joel joining as well. Joel and I are permanent fixtures on the show, but we're going to be having guests, and today we have the youngest member of Red Door Studios. How old yeah. are you, Michael? 27. 27 years, 27 years old. old. He helps us out with backlink building. We're a digital marketing company. But today, what are we going to be talking about in, on the podcast? Well, I think, I think one of the reasons today we don't really have, you know, some fancy guests like Alan we had last week talking about, um, you know, uh, donkey, having sex with donkeys and like doing cocaine in the streets, none of that. Today, we figured like we're all the way at episode number uh, six already. And a lot of people don't even know really about Andrew and I, why we're here, who the hell are these guys? Why do they even have the right to make a podcast about Medellin? And then we've got Michael, who um, works with us, and he is, I'd say, what, 10 years younger as a generation? He's like a generation younger. So I'm <laughs> what assuming is he? he's... Uh, are you a millennial? Uh, 1992. Is that a millennial? 1992. I think it is. I think I am a millennial. Okay. Nin- yeah. this, this guy, man, you born... He was probably made to, like, a Boys to Men track or, like, <laughs> something, like, really cool like that. Well, my dad was Colombian, so oh. it was probably some Hector like, Laos. Yeah, for sure. Like so your dad, so we jumped, we're, yeah, we jumped the gun sure. on that, but, but once again, Mike Mike has the... Um, the he has, he's Colombian background. I'm the only one that's really, like, trying really hard to get my, you know, <laughs> Colombian-ness popping off here but one of the main reasons is we want to let you guys know a bit about what our story is if you care or not um but so in the future if you watch other shows you'll understand where we're coming from um and why it is that we're here uh and why we've been here for so long um so yeah i guess first michael you are colombian but where did you grow up what's 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 so i was actually born uh june 25th 1992 in venezuela then I was raised in the U.S. I moved when I was two years old. So pretty much 17 years in the U.S. Then in 2000, 2011, I moved here. So yeah. that makes you like confused. Or what <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pretty 2011, good. same year as I, I came here. I was a year before I came in 2010. Um, yeah. And so what else, what do you do here, Michael? Obviously, you, you work uh, at Red Door. What else do you do in Medellin? So apart from working at Red Door, um, I usually get up two hours before I go to work. And I give English classes online to little Chinese kids. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so little so, Chinese kids. How does that work? Um, <clears throat> is it some sort of platform? It's an online platform, but from Asia, from the States, from another it's, country? It's Chinese. So we actually have to abide by, by like Chinese law and everything. Um, really? Have to, yeah. Like I had to send them a whole bunch of certificates and papers. Like they're just, legit or you yeah, just made them up? Like you uh, went to like a Colombian market and paid somebody to print out some shit. Actually, like, you remember Leo, right? He yeah. actually photoshopped all that shit for me. All right. Well, yeah, Leo. Uh, yeah, so, so a few illegal <laughs> things went on. So you photoshopped some shit. And now, and when did you start, yeah. when did you start teaching um, English online? Um, it was so, actually so, so Andrew's Chinese. brother. It was actually Andrew's brother who got me on, and it, okay. I was living. Yeah, shout in out Egypt. to Franco. Yeah. Frankie, Franco, come what back, up, Frankie, baby. Uh-huh. And, and how how long is how long ago was that? That was probably three years ago now. You think it's one of the best decisions you made? Psh, one of the best decisions, right. yeah, man. Easy so you, money. And you and you make you make. Uh, so you're here. Um, you work with us. Um, we try to pay you just below the minimum wage to keep yeah. you hungry. And then, and then you, keep and then, me motivated. I like yeah, that. That's what mo- I like. Keep, keep you hungry. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you you, you, what, you earn what? Yen? What <laughs> USD, you, what, actually. USD. Oh, they pay you yeah, USD, USD what? To like a US bank account? Uh, PayPal. And then I connect my PayPal to an app called Nikki, and that's connected to my Colombian pay- bank account. Oh, yeah. Because so I have an American PayPal, then the other ones are Colombian. Because there's no Colum- – Colombia key doesn't have PayPal unless if it's like a business account through the Davivienda or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And even that. then, yeah. the Davivienda prices are crazy. Oh, okay. And they have – you have to give them a lot of paperwork. It's not that easy. Right. 
Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you know what? Else? Uh, sorry to cut you off. We forgot to mention what we're drinking today. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, very important. Very important. Yeah. Very important. We're still doing oh, the five oh, minutes. Yeah. It seems like people online like the fact that we drink every five minutes during the podcast. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to be drinking Don Julio. Setenta. The setenti. Yeah, yeah, the setenti. The setenti. Yeah, this, this is supposed to be a limited set. It's young limitada. Uh, the silver. So from 2012. So this is a seven-year-old uh, limited bottle we're drinking today. I've never had this. I'm a Don Julio fan, but um, yeah. we already had a shot. I never had this, this either. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. good man. Now, now I said before we, I guess before we get too far ahead, it's, it's so you work with us, you're teaching um, online English, making US dollars. Sounds like a perfect formula. Um, but yeah, wait, and and how, how old are you right now? You're 27. You're 27, yeah. so that's a pretty good setup. You, you, yeah. You're working for a Colombian company, uh, obviously, as a full time salaried employee. You get like the benefits and everything. On top of that, you're making U.S. dollars teaching Asian kids English. I mean, that's got to be amazing, right? It's amazing. Uh, I never imagined I'd be in this position at 27 years old in Colombia. And I have. Uh, I also study to be an English teacher, so I have one more semester left. Yeah, okay, at, so at the finally, UPB. At the UPB. There's a lot of fine girls there, huh? And so is this everywhere, everywhere. You know, we all we all have our stories about how we ended up here. But why did you? What 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 brought you back here? In 2011, you can give us the small, the short version. You have to go into the deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, some yeah. deep, this, but yeah. like the short version is, um, so my mother and my sisters actually decided to come back and I was only going to be here for three months just to make okay. sure they were set up and good. Okay. And then three months turned into six then six turned into a year. I remember you and telling then, me you had a similar situation like me. You came with some money, with some U.S. dollars and you yeah. went a little wild. A lot. Of, I were, came with uh, a, a few thousand, like, yeah, a, yeah. Good, a good amount in my bank account. And I was were, living in a three bedroom apartment alone in like a, a 23rd story. And what, uh, what, what, third, 23rd floor. What, like, what, 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 what caused that to move from like balling out on a daily basis and just living life with plans to go back home? What, what made you decide that you wanted to stay or was it not so much by choice? And you don't have to go through yeah, what It was that actually is. kind of, I don't know, was that, I think it was kind of progressive. I just got used to life here. It was, I think it was basketball, honestly. Okay. So I, I met um, some, some Chocuanos, which is like the, some native Colombians yeah. from uh, the Pacific coast of Colombia. And I started playing ball with them, and one of them was playing with La Selección de Medellín, which is the team that represents Medellín. Okay. And I was 19, so I was still on the under 21 team. Okay. And like you compare it to the U.S., and in the U.S. I'm a guard, so yeah. I'm like six two, I'm not that tall. But here I can play power forward, I can play center, I can play point guard, anything. So it was, I was like a beast. They put me on the team. So one of your main one of your main reasons for staying here is bullying. That's really what it is. Yeah. You, yeah. You, I, took I took advantage. Took of I took advantage. Took advantage. But that's how yeah. that's how we met. Actually, I remember at the yeah. Um, uh, at Belen. Yeah. They put a, uh, oh. oh fuck. Time right, to do a, some drinking. Well, we mouth. keep talking. All right. Keep so talking. yeah, we met we met playing ball. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, we were hung over as shit. Yeah, we, we were hung over as shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just once a double. Two. Mm. So, so smooth. <laughs> so yeah. So we so we met playing ball. Why is this happening? I don't know what's happening right now, but you know sirens are going off left, right, and center. Um, we're in a safe environment. Um, so so yeah, I remember I remember that Andrew. Yeah, we went there to play because we used to we do that every Saturday, and we forced ourselves out of the house because we had a big Friday. And Mike was just standing underneath the rim, you know, sort of like dribbling around and stuff. And we smelled like shitty of like some probably of tequila, seventy year old or yeah. or something cheaper and. I don't. I didn't want to play. These guys were like forcing me to play. I just literally really couldn't run. And there's all these big African Colombian guys um, playing at uh, a pretty pretty high level. And I remember we just. I don't know. We we exchanged numbers. I don't yeah. know how that happened. I remember I talked to I talked to Joel first, and yeah. you were the one that asked me. You're like, hey, you speak really good English. Where yeah. are you from? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that, that's kind of how it went yeah. down. Yeah. And then Andrew told me about going to coming to El Poblado to play with you guys. Yeah. That's when we started talking. And then more. I beat you at basketball. Whoa, 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 whoa. We became I, I, <laughs> I think it's pretty equal. It's 50 50. I actually play with the Choquanos now. Yeah. They're older. So and you also play with, with my university team. Yeah, and I play with your university team. Yeah. I didn't go to UPB, but I play on yeah. the alumni team. We dominate sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he plays on all sorts of teams yeah. uh, down here. 
What about you, Joel? You just, I don't play just shit. gym. I just, <laughs> just, I just, I've been injured for like I'm on the permanent injury list. I got, injured, got that hip. I got that hip problem. A hip replacement. <laughs> I need to get a hip replacement in my thirties. Ever since you got those grays in your beard, you have to play yeah. ball. This is like, really, it's yeah, after right? he started growing the beard. It was really yeah, good. Man. Yeah, well, man. People ask me if this, if it's real. The stripes like, I'm like, yeah, what kind of guy wants to dye two stripes in his beard gray? But yeah, that's really but particular, that's though. It's really just those two stripes. It's particular, it's particular. It's yeah. really particular. Um, so I guess one of the big things we want to know is, I think, so so you got here, you decided to stay here. It was progressive. Um, you registered to university. Um, what is it? I mean, you have your own perspective because you're Colombian background. You're fluent in Spanish. Yes. Much like Andrew. Yes. Um, and what does it feel like being a Colombian American Venezuelan? I mean, let's just say Colombian American coming back to Colombia at 19? 19. 19 and living here. How does it feel like to you? From you, you do you fit, feel like you fit into both worlds as a Colombian and a foreigner? How do people treat you? What's it like from your perspective? I mean, honestly, it's it's like you fit in, but as soon as as soon as you you speak English, you're like, oh, you're a gringo. So it's funny because I'm I'm sure Andrew knows this. In the U.S., you're the Colombian dude. Yeah. Here, yeah. you're the gringo. So what am yeah. I? You know, it's weird. It's kind of like a cultural clash. Okay. But it's nice. I mean, it's amazing. Like when I got here, the thing I say like when you come here as a teenager, psh, a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot. Of, a lot but of crazy like, stuff. More so, than my first would... two years here, it's like it was like a dream, man. But more. Wait, wait. So a lot of drugs, <laughs> a lot of girls, a lot of alcohol. My first two years was a dream. All right, so yeah. we know what you were about. I, the was first two years point. was just ball, uh, going crazy, yeah. and just chilling. And That's then after that, then I started studying. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and, you more feel, and do you feel the same way? Like you, you, you coming back here, you felt like you were the ball. He actually, I'm going to steal this from Andrew because Andrew felt like the Mexican. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like the Latino, because yeah. they also like, as soon as they hear you speak uh, Spanish in the U.S., they think you're Mexican. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, I grew up in Southern California, um, Orange County to be exact. And yeah, I mean, grew up there and I lived there for 20, but basically 28 years, 27 years. Yeah. And there's so many Central American people, mostly Mexican, that all white people usually think that you are, uh, and black people, white people and black people, Americans, I guess, are, they'll think that you are Mexican just because you speak Spanish, your family speaks Spanish, because they can't differentiate. And, and I mean, it, it's not like I'm faulting them. Yeah, yeah. It's just because... I'd be I'm, proud if somebody called me a Mexican. Yeah, like, I, yeah. Mexico. Yeah, literally. I'm drinking Don Julio by the, the, yeah, by the, by, yeah, if people would, sometimes it'd be like, oh, you're Mexican. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I mean... Yeah, uh, yeah. I was so tired of explaining after 28 years that I was just like, oh, whatever. It's like, there's nothing wrong with being Mexican. Anybody ever call you Carlos? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because these, I mean, I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada, a multicultural country where there's all these, you know, from all over the world. And I would say, hey, well, what's your name? I'm like, my name is Joel. Two minutes later, oh, Jamal. So, you know, like, what's going on? I'm like, they just can't get it right. They, they just paint yeah, me as a Jamal yeah. and I'm a Jamal. You guys are, you know, Mexican or whatever um, uh, down there. And then, Andrew, to you, how does it feel? You as a Colombian American, you grew up speaking Spanish in your house also. Yeah. And when when you came here, did you feel like the sort of fake Colombian guy in Colombia, or did you feel like a gringo in Colombia? How how did you? What, what did that feel like? To you? Uh, it was great actually, because in the U.S., um, especially like Orange County, since it's more like middle class. Um, uh, middle and upper class and conservative, although it's Southern California, it's pr pretty conservative. Um, people look at you, you're like, oh, you're like a tall brown guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for the women part, like, you know, girls. While in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in California, people look at you like, oh, shit. Like, and a tall Latino. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and, and that's different and yeah, yeah. maybe exotic for, for some people. But, um, but here, it was it was... It was cool, but also kind of a, a clash because I'd come here and no one would look at me. Yeah, yeah. No woman, nothing. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> not, not even an animal. Not even guys. No animals, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was interesting because I never felt like I fit in. So here yeah. I was like, shit, I fit in. You know, this is like my home. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is how I felt um, immediately accepted, immediately uh, comfortable. But obviously, once I opened my mouth uh, to speak Spanish, even. Since I, I I don't have the Colombian uh, or the Paisa accent, people can automatically tell that I'm not from here. And then obviously if I start, oh shit, 
Oh, yeah. Right. So you keep, fun, talk, keep going. So I'll pour, I'll pour them up. Speaking, speaking English yeah. makes you stick out like a sore thumb too. Um, and, and is that a good thing for you guys? Like, was that a good thing for you guys? Like, you know, people look at you, they probably say, all right, this guy's, this guy's Pais or this guy's Colombian. And then you open your mouth and they hear that, you know, you sp either speak English or I know some people say like both of you right now. Um, I mean, know Michael yeah. says like some people can't even tell that he's most people can't tell when, when you speak I Spanish. Only speak Spanish. Yeah. yeah, I was actually about to ask Andrew that. Can people still tell when you only speak Spanish? Um, not not many. Not much, some, right? Some people will like some deep fucking taxi driver yeah. 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 <laughs> been here for yeah. like fifty years speaking to people will be like, "Where are you from?" I'm like, "Damn it, I thought I had yeah, yeah. that accent." Now <laughs> I've been I've been I've been learning Spanish now. Well, I've, I'm self taught, but I've been learning Spanish for. Uh, 10 years now or living in Latin America crazy enough for 10 years now and um, I understand just about everyone speaking but taxi drivers that's a whole other thing if you guys are going to visit here or even if you've been studying Spanish and you feel like you know you topped your university and your four-year program and you roll into a cab here and go to the you know Next some level. you will Next you will level. get like three words yeah. that they're yeah, saying yeah, so don't level. feel yeah. Yeah. um don't All feel right, any ways take the shot. shot really quick shot number, number, two. Two. number two number two number two cheers, like cheers. I guess we could we could take it back because I know that we have especially from my blog. Um, by the way, it's Medellin Buzz. If you don't know it, you should read it. Um, I, I get a lot of people that relate to me, uh, and not because they were born in Colombia and raised in the United States, but just because of the, either their age, uh, where they're at in life. Because wh when I came to to Medellin, when I decided to come to Colombia, was I, I was 28 years old, and I was basically tired of living in California. I was tired of going to work uh, at an office, at a law firm to do digital marketing for them. Um, I was uh, I, I was kind of frustrated too at the time uh, in respect for like relationships too with like women uh, because I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. I I, I don't know. I, but I it sounds know. like, I feel like, you know, let's jump the gun again, but I feel like you're right back in a complete fucking circle. Yeah, now, Because I've heard later. you say, and it's a whole other topic about dating, I've heard you say on several occasions, it's like, I don't think I'm ever going to find a girl here because, yeah, yeah. you know. But, but back then I was frustrated. Yeah. Now I'm certain. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will I, never find a girl. That, that I probably won't Come settle on. down. Um, and if I do, it'll, it'll, I, it, I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know where I'm going to go with that, but I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty um, at, uh, at peace with myself. And but, you've written, and you have like the number one, I think, the number one blog out there about dating, um, dating in, in Medellin, dating in Colombia. I think if you search that, yours comes up number one. Yeah, like, so well, you, I, I wrote the blog basically when I was uh, teaching English. Yeah. I, would, I, I wrote it because I wanted my students to have something in English to read that wasn't like Columbia Reports or or like Medellin Living at the time, which was, that it's pretty bland and, and direct to their target audience, which is like to inform. Yeah. Um, and, and so for like a student that's like 19, 17, 21, yeah. it, it's super boring, right? Yeah. So I wrote my blog where I write about my life and stuff. And one time a, a student said, hey, teacher, what about the women here? What about your dating life here? Yeah. And why don't you write about that? That'd be interesting. So I wrote it. And at, at the beginning, it was like literally like 500 words. Now yeah. it's like over 40,000 words where I've gone over like six years of my dating life on there. So it's an evergreen. Post. Yeah, it's an well, evergreen. Well, 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 not just that. Mine used to be above his own. Yeah. Mine was number one, but yeah. I didn't know anything about SEO. Okay. I just wrote because I found it so funny uh -huh. because when we first came here, we'd be going out, me and a few, I'm not going to call their names in case they don't want to be called out on this, but we'd be going out a lot like most people. Yeah. And these guys in the hostel would be like, you know, there's girls meeting us at the hostel to go out and party and stuff. And they'd be like, how do you guys, you know, how do you know these girls? And how does it, da, 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 my experience is always messed up. So literally on one sort of like drunk high um, morning, I woke up and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to write this thing on my blog about dating. And I started writing it and mine just took off and people started commenting and stuff. And then I saw Andrew's down there. That's before we met him. And he's obviously an SEOG. So he knew about adding to his own and putting yeah. photos and all yeah. that. Mine has the same information from back in 2011. His is like, it's totally up to date and, yeah. um, and keeps his chronicles. So what I'm getting at, or the point is, that there are many people out there, both men and women, that actually are very interested at, um, in the position that I was in and that could relate, sorry, not interested, that could relate the position that I was in back then and that maybe could relate to your position you were in when you were 19 years old coming to Medellin. 
Um, so, so tell us a little bit about what was, you know, going on in your brain, what was going on in your life, uh, before you got here and then when you got here. So, <laughs> oh God. Wow. Uh, that was quick. Right. That was a really right, quick one. Felt like that was a two minute shot. Answer the question. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Smooth. So smooth. Smooth so like a plan. So smooth. Definitely smooth. So, um, my mindset was very different back in the U.S. because, so... A week before I came, uh, I was planning only to stay here for three months. Um, I was actually engaged for like a month in the U.S. before I came. At 19. What? At 19? At 19 years old. Shit. Um, yeah. Shit hit the fan. Was she older or younger? She was older. I kind of um, figured. Up until I, uh, up until like my farmer's second daughter. or third. Huh? Was she a farmer's daughter? She was not a farmer's well, daughter. Was she a, southern, mom, a she had, southern belle? She was a southern belle. Oh, yeah. all right. She was a mixed uh, American. Okay, mixed American. She, was, she had a single mom. So she never was met her father. Had. She had a single okay, mom. Okay. Yeah, I actually met her through her brother. But anyways, yeah. um, common thing. That you know, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, common thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Common thing. Yeah, I, would you be my friend? I know yeah, you've got yeah, a lot yeah. of sisters. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So um, so that so, went south. Yeah, that went south. So that also changed my mindset when I got here because uh, you know I'd been with the same woman for four years um, from the time I was fifteen. Wow. So I, my dating life wasn't very up to date. I wasn't. I had a mustache. I was fat. I had a fucking bowl cut. You know, wow. I was weighing two. We gonna, okay, we, we can we put a photo up? We gotta put a photo. Oh, up. We gotta put a photo. Right here, right here. You know, right the here. photos. Okay. The photo's gonna go so up. Good. You gotta do it before now. Look like yeah, a Bolivian rock star. Yeah. 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 So the funny thing is, in in the U.S., I wasn't really getting girls. Anyways, I actually don't know how I got that girl. Like, yeah. Really, she was very beautiful, actually. Um, but then I got here, and even looking fat and with my mustache and with that bowl cut, like. Within two weeks, I had a, I went to a gym and a girl actually came up to me, yeah, and was like, "Hey, I what's your, your name? Uh, <laughs> I love your mustache. I love your fat rolls. <laughs> let me help roller. you. Let me, let help, me you. help you get a little more in shape." Let, let me like, help okay. you get onto that machine. Yeah, it was amazing, man. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, oh shit, man! I've been going to the gym for nine years here. Not yeah. one time a girl came up to me and said, "Hey." <laughs> one time you dropped your towel though, didn't you? When I you dropped my towel. <laughs> that was a guy. I actually gave him his farted towel, one time and a girl looked over. I was there too. Shorts, the little shorts. I was there too, and it's not. It was not cool. So yeah, so you, so you, so you. So my mindset here was totally was uh was a complete one eighty. Okay. I was mainly because of dating. women, was, you would say. Mainly because of women, yes. Mainly like made you feel more. But it was also a lot of things. Like in the U.S., um, I was very like I didn't try alcohol till I was seventeen. Okay. I didn't really start smoking weed heavily till I was like seventeen. Also. So you smoke weed heavily. I do smoke weed. Heavily. Okay, that's yes. Good. What is heavily? Um, heavily. Yeah. After five thirty p.m., I'll at least have a, a joint a night. From Saturday to Sunday, I can't. Uh, probably like Wiz Khalifa, Snoop Dogg levels. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like on a Saturday, so if I'm the, just so, sitting, like, because I, I like doing normal Colombian shit. So I'll meet up with my Colombian friends. We'll go to the top of a mountain, literally. We'll sit there, just have a bottle of water, talk shit, and just smoke all day. That's some high shit on top yeah. of a mountain. We got to do an entire episode just about just smoking and edibles mountain, and on the mountain. On yeah. the mountain top. Like so, the yeah, top because you're one of those people that we had Alan Gagora last week on, on, and he said that you could legally have 20 grams. And I'm like, who the fuck carries 20 it's grams? It's actually 22.3 grams. Oh so shit! You're Alan the type of person right. that would probably carry twenty two point three grams. Yes, you go, if you I want do. to hike all no, the way, no, I carry twenty because I don't like to get because I know it's twenty two. You don't want to give papaya. I don't want to <laughs> give papaya <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I only carry twenty. I, I can't I'm believe going I up hired to a mountain. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, at least we don't think he comes to work high, but he I might once he does his job. It's good. So, so I find that really interesting because and Andrew mentioned the first thing too about he was talking about um about. Women, uh, I mean, when I came here, I found that the women were absolutely beautiful. And obviously, like anybody else, I thought it was. But I don't have the same story. Um, yeah, but he didn't finish. You know, he didn't finish his story. He's yeah. still telling it. Um, yeah. So I pretty much dropped off. At, yeah, I got here. I, I met a woman. Um, the gym girl. The gym girl. And it was funny because I had just come out of a relationship. And it really just, I got into one. And it was literally yeah. like right there and then. But you're a chronic, uh, you're a chronic dater. so I am a chronic know. dater. It's... Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been noticing that. Yeah, yeah just so yeah. I guess she kind of changed my mindset. She was so she was a costeña from Cincelejo. Okay. Damn. Yeah. That sounds nice. I don't know what that mean. Yeah. So it was actually very hard for me because I thought I thought I knew Spanish till I got to Medellin. Okay. I thought I was like because obviously I took ESL classes and I took Spanish in high school in the U.S. So I was always the best. 
Yeah, yeah. Any question? But yeah, you didn't grow up speaking on. Spanish with your family? Yeah, but it was like my dad died when I was twelve. Once he died, the Spanish kind of stopped. Okay. So it was like um, when I got here and I heard Paisa Spanish, I didn't understand much. They speak faster than like I spoke a very neutral Spanish when I got here. Okay. Very neutral. Not like from Spain with the little lisp. Yeah, just yeah. a very neutral Spanish here. The Paisa Spanish, you know, it's like kind of singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when I heard that first Costeña, I was. It was the language barrier, actually. At least you don't speak you saying, Spanish like no, you live I in a dump truck like, 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 like Felipe. Because huh? he what? just speaks like, sometimes he just goes off like he lives behind a garbage truck. Oh, yeah, he goes And I'm like, what <laughs> he are you goes talking off. about? You're like an educated dude coming out talking about <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Like, come on, man. Open your <laughs> mouth. Yeah, you have a Costeña accent, I mean, you grew up in the U.S. and your Spanish is still better than his. That's amazing. That's fucking great. Yeah, so, so okay, and... I'm going to edit you, edit you out of this podcast. <laughs> He's going to edit me out. Good um, luck with that. Yeah, so after... I'm going to edit like, you out of this bottle. So <laughs> she was like she was like my first contact with Colombian relationships, and it was... It's totally... In my opinion, it's totally different to dating an American woman. Like, these women are just pure passion, man. They're blood, their blood is boiling. It's hard to explain. So I apologize for any American women watching this. I, mean, I don't think No offense. No that. offense. No, actually, that, yeah. But I mean, I've and, met plenty of beautiful and wonderful American women, but it's just yeah. Latinas are my thing. Colombian women are my well, thing. Well, just to interject, and I'll let you continue. I, the best relationships I've had in my life have been with uh, American women. Um, and I've been here nine years, and I've been married. Oh! Wow, you guys got shit. me sweating up in here. All right, just to so, feel no, so yeah, so I mean, uh, good just shit, to, ju- it's a different, it's a different perspective. You've yeah. had a different uh, experience than than I have. Not saying that I've had a terrible di- uh, experience with women here, but I think I've had a more meaningful and deeper level of relationship with women in the in in the U.S. just because of the whole language and culture thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Where's your shot glass? Is that? But is no. oh, because of the language and culture. Because yeah, languages, languages for sure. Yeah, yeah, big, like big yeah. The, uh, so continue, sorry. So yeah, um, where was I? At? You, you, you said uh, you had the, <laughs> that you you were dating the the gym girl. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I pretty much learned about relationship with her. Then I also had a problem with her with some crazy Colombian dude that was, I guess, also seeing her. And then I ended up breaking up with her, and then that's when my crazy Colombian face started. Literally, like, I dated her probably for like four months, five months. And we broke up, and it was like, I remember sometimes I would wake up, and I would walk into my living room when I lived alone, and there'd just be, like, two of my cousins, three random girls over there, just everyone just sleeping in my living room, just... Wow. Yeah, crazy. We'd always have just a hookah in the middle of the room, a whole bunch of pillows. That's a hookah, not a hooker. Hookah, a hookah, hookah, not a okay. hooker. You yeah. just got to double check. <laughs> and a whole oh. bunch of weed and alcohol, and that was it. Okay. Wow. That's actually the reason I really don't drink much anymore, because when I first got here, it was just too much, man. Yeah. Just like hangovers that would last two or three days yeah. of straight guado, man. It was okay. crazy. Yeah. And, um, and all of that stopped let's because... Let's do the shot. Let's do, let's oh. do let's that do the shot. shot. So all of this pretty much stopped because of university. Hmm. So you, you, you settle down, you put, you put your... Uh, I would say I kind of like got over the heartbreak and then I started uh, university because that was what had me like... It was the heartbreak. Yeah. You, go, you get heartbroken? I got... Uh, that was the only time I've experienced it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, yeah, yeah so I guess I do. The U- in the U.S. you experienced heartbreak. That's what I mean. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... Oh, you got over the heartbreak yeah, from yeah, back yeah. in the U.S. Okay, like the girl here, the like that... That was like really, a rebound. Oh, yeah, okay. and it didn't really affect me. It was weird. I yeah. literally like... I told her, you know what, just fuck off. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, right, cool. but when I got, like, the girl I was with for four years, obviously I was engaged. That shit hit me hard. So I was kind of like a rebound. I, w- I would thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah, not going to mention she now? your name. Where is she now? She had a baby. She's got a dude. Okay. Hey, to the dude, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where she is. She spoke to me probably like a year and a half ago, two years ago. And she was actually living in Itagui. So who knows where she She's is. She's here? Now. Yeah. So I don't know where she is now. All right. So you settled down because of the university. She's nice though. So because of university, you wanted to get back. And, and did you know that you wanted to study languages? Um, no, I actually, um, good question. It was, I don't know. I don't exactly know how I ended up on that. But all I know is it was actually because of basketball as well. Really? I met, so the, the trainer for the Selección de Medellín, you know who it was? Who? Oh. Jorge, Jorge Morales. Jorge. Hey, shout out to Jorge, Jorge. Morales. What up, profe? Profe, la buena. So, <laughs> so pretty much, um, I met him, and he was the one, he is the motherfucker that convinced me to enter university. 
Oh, no shit. That, really, that's, no shit. That's great. I was thinking of not studying, and then he was like, hey, um, you're a great player. We need a shooter. Um, you could be the star on this team. Just enter it. You could study whatever. And then I went and I looked at the degrees, and I was like, what? Um, language to study languages it only cost me 700 bucks a semester 700 bucks I could spend that in a weekend you guys know this we can yeah. spend this in one weekend or even in one night if it's a really fucking crazy night mm -hmm. yeah we, ta I, we talked about that yeah. with Richard yeah. when he was yeah. on the podcast a, a great weekend yeah. would be about that <laughs> so I, I had the interview at the UPB um, as soon as they heard my English they are like you're in and that was it okay cool and cool. I fell in love with the actual like with, with studying languages, teaching, and see, like my extra income is now actually English teaching online. Yeah, Full so that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's it. Was nothing like it was nothing planned. It was just kind of just happened, you know. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Now, what yeah. are your plan? You you plan to stick around here? Or what you doing? So, um, obviously, my plan is to stick with Red Door. I actually talked to Andrew about this uh, a bit. Um, really, I was gonna fire you. Yeah. <laughs> smoking weed. I plan on I'm leaving next year. I do want to take like a trip because I finished university, okay. so I want to take like a, a four to six month trip okay. to, I feel like when you travel, you kind of reset your mind. Yeah. And so I want to take that trip, reset my mind, come back. You want to go to Europe? I want to go to, I'm going to go to uh, Spain, Egypt, uh, Germany, and then I want to do Europe in general. And I want to okay. come back, buy an apartment, maybe several apartments, and then like start something here. All right. A little cabin up in Santa Elena. Cool, cool. I like that hippie shit, you know. Cool. Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah, so, I know you eat mushrooms too. I eat, yes, I do eat mushrooms. Yeah, well, probably like once or twice a year. Right yeah, now. don't worry. We'll have a podcast where we talk about alternative drugs uh, yeah. in Medellin and have some experts here because I don't eat mushrooms and I don't do well. I tried them the first time this summer. Yeah, I'm. I'm just good. in case you're into that kind of stuff, just check out the um, the Instagram page Shrooms of Columbia. Is just that check yours? It out. That is actually mine. Shrooms shoes. of Columbia. Shrooms right. of Columbia. Shrooms. Anything related Plus to that. shrooms or weed in Medellin. Do you do out. like shroom tours? Like for example, if I'm like a a, a Colombian or even a, a traveler or foreigner here, and I'm I'm like I'd like to go up to Santa Elena and pick some shrooms and trip out a little bit and. I have done it. Um, I, I still do it on occasion. I don't like it's not a money thing. Yeah. It's if you talk to me and I like you literally. Uh, a shout out to a few friends that have met me through there. Yeah. Um, then I'll take you out, but we probably I probably won't go up and eat mushrooms with you. Yeah. Because I've already had a few bad experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, I took a foreign girl. She was a Spanish girl out one time. And she kind of freaked out and started crying. It was fine at the end because I talked her through it. But I was like, "Yeah, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to sit here." Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Like, of Like I'll take you and and I'll take you and I'll help you find them. But I'm not going to sit there and consume them with you. Also, remember, um, in the last podcast, you didn't talk about it. We did. But you can't have more than one gram of psilocybin mushrooms, which makes no sense because of one mushroom, suicidal mushrooms. Psilocybin, psilocybin mushrooms. Yeah. Also, the red one, which is Amanita muscaria, for those who know about mushrooms, you can't have uh, one, more than one gram of that either. Okay. And one mushroom is more than one gram, so you can't really have it. Maybe but should, police here don't really know should about Should we ever this. do like yeah. a podcast on yeah. mushrooms maybe once and we do like a disclaimer? And we all yeah. take mushrooms. We yeah. all eat it. Dude, we'd be fucked up. Who wants that to see that? Be, that would be like a really deep deep combo, though. That I'd would be, be like a crazy deep combo. crying. Like, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You'd be talking, talking about your, like, okay. your childhood, your childhood. Felipe would be speaking like real Spanish, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like announcing King Spanish, yeah. King Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Castellano. It's yeah. called yeah. Castellano. Yeah. So wait, so wait. Get one so one of the podcast to one thousand views and two hundred subscribers, and we do it. Yeah. One thousand views, two hundred subscribers. I'm down yeah. for that. Uh, one thousand views to what? Views. And we will of eat mushrooms episode. of this episode. Yeah. I will go and I will pick the mushrooms for that. And we're gonna do the next episode on mushrooms. Wait, we, and we do an episode. All right, so repeat that. What 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 was the we challenge? Get, let's, let's say because right now we're averaging two hundred views. Let's get that to a thousand views. If we get a thousand views on this video and two hundred, how many subscribers we got right now? Like seventy or something. Like seventy. Wow. That's like my whole family. Yeah. <laughs> that's all of them just yeah, Andrew. So <laughs> all Messias. My thing. Yeah. My mom, I don't know if my mom knows how to use YouTube, but so, it's all right. So if we YouTube. get to two hundred subscribers yeah. and a thousand views on this. Uh, you. It's got to be on YouTube because we're also on Spotify and Google yeah. Podcasts and and yeah, iTunes. Yeah. Um, but on YouTube, if we get to a thousand views on here. He'll go pick the mushrooms. We will eat them. Yeah. And we'll have a deep discussion about 
I don't know. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 it'd be amazing. It'd be crazy. Need yeah. some water. Yeah, and yeah. Some, yeah. yeah. Balance yeah. it out with other. Anyways, I'm not. I'm not getting some drums because I don't. You know, I'm not going to promote that. Yeah, yeah. We can't. That's not. That's not this type of show. So wait. So Andrew, we're gonna bounce off Michael. Great shit. Um, Andrew. When you came here, you landed here. What was your, not just plan, but what were you doing? Call it financially, economically. What mm. was your and what was your and what was your vision? Call it. You know, everybody talks about the one year, six month, five year, ten year. Where did you see yourself, sort of financially, and what did you see your, do, yourself doing once you decided, like, I'm gonna give this place a shot? What were you doing in that particular? Yeah. Moment? So I came here. Um... Uh, well, I first got to Bogota because yeah. that's where my, my, my family's from. So I had a couple uncles. I had a, 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 a few cousins there. I stayed with my cousin um, who's got a couple kids. And I was and my grandma was there too. So it was a really cool experience. Cathar- All right. Well, that's the cue well, for that's some it. more drinking. Since your story sucks. Let's get yeah. right back. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, man, I'm feeling these. Yeah, so anyways, but give me like you 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 pass right. that on and keep yeah, you're going you go. with your shit. So you were over in Bogota. Yeah, I was in Bogota. Bogota. Um, Bogota. But before before I got here, I was doing uh, digital marketing for a law firm. What uh, does that mean? Uh, Digital marketing. Uh, digital marketing, basically doing search engine optimization. Okay. Uh, I built a website on WordPress um, together with a WordPress. Uh, professional or designer or, or programmer mm-hmm. at the time. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I learned a lot from the, the, the head, um, uh, attorney of the firm was an amazing guy. Um, and I learned a lot from him as far as marketing goes, um, and digital marketing as well. So, um, I left there and I came here. Um, and I, once I got here, I, I had some clients, uh, freelance, right? Uh, I was uh, back then. It was Odesk. Today it's uh, Upwork. So I used to use Odesk, Guru.com, Freelancer.com. I'd get clients from the United States that would pay me to my United States account or to my PayPal account. Yeah. Um, and I'd be able to, you know, have dollars. So I was doing all right. I mean, I was doing okay. Um, I even got a job. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? Okay, so we're just going to level up with people. Take the shot. Um, yeah. We're going to level up. I know I noticed yeah, that. Sorry. The guest who doesn't drink, he didn't even yeah. give us just it's like 17 years of bad luck and sex and shit. <laughs> By the way, bad luck. Um, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, Friday the 13th. Personally, I think it's good luck Friday the 13th. come back to that. Yeah. So anyways, but you talk about, and I think this this is like, I wrote a blog post about traveling and, and working and, and people actually, the, mo- the, the most comments more than the girls pot um uh blog post and everything was like hey man i appreciate the honesty because i said it's not it's not easy facebook and shit makes stuff look easy he said he was doing all right so to put things in perspective let's be 100 percent honest at that time what were you making the US dollar, dollars? well the dollar was at like 1200 but that's what i want to know in yeah the dollar, dollar was, that, in a month. was at like 1200 pesos uh, really? Yeah, so the peso was at twelve hundred. To imagine today it's at like thirty four hundred. Yeah. Back then twelve hundred, I thought I was fucking balling out in Colombia. Three times. Yeah. I'm three making times. a dollar and I get twelve hundred. A Coca Cola costs like two hundred pesos, three hundred pesos. I was like, I was a king in in Bogota. I thought I was I was doing all right. But, but, what but what does that translate to in, do- what were you in dollars? What were you making in dollars? So what were you clearing in dollars? Uh, roughly about a thousand dollars a month. And yeah, and that's to you, you were doing great. At, at 1,200 pesos. Uh, and also in Bogota, and I was living in, um, in Suba. Um, I granted that I was living with my cousin, so I didn't really have to pay much rent. I, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'd pay the whole rent myself, and then yeah, yeah. the other month they would pay. And then, yeah, yeah. So we had a pretty good understanding. She was amazing. Um, their family's amazing as well. And so I, I even got to the point where I was like, okay, I want to integrate myself because I'm going to be here for a year. That was my plan. Yeah. Be in Colombia for a year and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do. Yeah. Get my head right. Right. So um, I even got a job in Bogota in downtown Bogota. And I lived really? in Suba for any of you guys that know the geography there. It's north. And then you have to go into the downtown area through Taz Millennium. At the time, it was amazing. It was so fun because everything was so new. The, the, the chaos, the noise, the lines, the smells, the food. Um, going through downtown. This, this is a guy that hates traveling, by the way. It sounds like he's a great. He sounds like a, a yeah, yeah. I'm not a big traveler. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big shit. traveler. Yeah. Um, 
But at the time, it was awesome. I had so much fun. Um, I remember literally listening to uh, on my on my headphones um, "Empire State of Mind" by Jay Z and and, yeah. and Alicia Keys, mm -hmm. and and the part where it says, "If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere." I'm like, "If you can make it in Bogota, in Colombia, you can yeah. make it anywhere. New York yeah. is easy." Yeah. Um, so. So I, I got a job there at a call center. I ascended. I became like a manager, but then I got tired of it and I got some more clients online and I quit. Um, and then Scott Dallinger, which is my boy, we're going to Mexico, all of yeah, us. Yeah. We're all going to Mexico in Mexico. October. Yeah. Podcast in yeah, October. Yeah. Even Luis is going. Yeah. So it's actually a, a, com a company trip. So. He doesn't go by the name Luis anymore. That's yeah, a slave sorry, name. Flippy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, so when he got to Bogota, He's like, yo, let's go visit, uh, let's go visit Medellin because everyone says we should go there. Uh, you know, lonely, uh, lonely Planet, all that stuff was writing about it. So couch surfing was huge back then too. So we came here and we stayed at the Black Sheep Hostel. Shout out to Cal uh, Calvin, uh, Calvin yep. uh, the Kiwi ho uh, hostel owner. Uh, and we stayed there for two weeks and literally I was still working on my laptop. I was kind of a, a digital nomad. Um, at the time, and um, immediately after two weeks, we found we went to the Exito on La Diez, on the bulletin board. Yep, they used to found, stick those things on. They there, still like do. Old school. Oh, they, they still, still do. There's yeah. still a bulletin board there. Where old Exito school. doesn't know that the internet exists. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people don't. Yeah. They're still old school. So uh, we saw an, uh, um, an advertisement for a, for an apartment. We rented it. It was right there near Premium Plaza in San Diego, uh, border with uh, Poblado, and. Um, and I kept working online. Um, so to answer your question, what was like my plan? There really was no plan. Like literally I living. was just like, I know I wanted to be here a year. I know that I could get clients online. I'm obviously I'm a talker yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm pretty good at sales. So I was able to get on those platforms like Upwork or back then Odesk, Freelancer and stuff and get enough clients to survive. Yeah. Um, but really 2014 was kind of like the pivot point where yeah. I went from being able to survive to creating something big, something bigger than just myself. But do you think that's out of necessity or like, I mean, it sounded like, you know, Michael sort of, you know, threw a ball, somebody suggested something, you went to school, he met us somehow at a basketball court, then through us met your brother who ended up. You know, your thing sort of, your stuff, it sounded sort of like it just fell into but, place. But also, you. like, the majority of my stability in Colombia has been thanks to you guys, honestly. Because you to guys start. have been the first contract I've ever had. The first state, like, my, remember in the beginning, it was just a few hours a week just writing content. Yeah. But then by the end, it was, I knew I always had um, a few hours a day with you guys. Yeah. Writing contact or backlink or whatever it was. And that gave me like a lot of financial stability here and kind of some direction, you know, but, but it did, but then it did sort of like, it was sort of, I don't know what you call but even that. Then, like even then, even that was like, it just fell in my lap because yeah, it was one day, you remember Andrew? I remember you still had Big Red back then. You hadn't lost Big Red yet. <laughs> big, red. big Red is my yeah. Big Red towel. That I literally very, remember very... you had that don't, fucking don't, towel wait, don't in let's your jump, hand. Don't let's yeah. jump over this. You know, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, that's not for all, any of you that don't. Let we, me tell I you this to real quick. Big red. big red is a true I Medellin classic. <laughs> like, Medellin hero. If, if, you, if you ever played basketball with Legendary. Andrew, if you went to the gym Legend. with Andrew, if you were a girl that slept over at the house with Andrew, <laughs> if, ra if you rained that fell in our living room with Andrew, you would know Big Red. It is the ugliest, <laughs> big, ugly, cheap towel that with this Baldwin. guy. What's that character from Peanuts with with with, 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 yeah, yeah. with yeah. What's that guy? I he always carried his little blanket. Yeah. Andrew carried Big Red as if it was his faithful companion, a big, dirty, <laughs> disease-carrying towel. Until you busted someone's nose at fucking oh Heinrich yeah yeah Heinrich but Heinrich ran from, in, uh, he ran into from, my back no Heinrich from Dakota Dakota yeah, yeah. Juice shout by the way Dakota. shout out to Dakota Heinrich uh, ran into you fucking busted, busted his, his nose. nose it started bleeding and then I gave him big red and I was so sad and, and, and <laughs> Heinrich Heinrich is probably dead now because of the disease he got <laughs> yeah, right he got the, big the, red so up. Andrew should just do a blog post <laughs> all about, about big the red. legend big of big red yeah, yeah for sure, too bad. sure. Uh, yeah, anyway yeah. so um, but yours yours was no, you said two, 20, but, the, 2014. but the reason the reason why um, is basically I know I need to make a million dollars because I need to buy my parents their retirement like they, they gave up their life when they were 24, 25, and I was four years old 
from Colombia to go to the United States and immigrate there to, and not knowing the language. My dad was an accountant. My mom also studied and she and they couldn't use any of their skills. They had to go clean shit, literally clean old people's shit, mm -hmm. work at the basements of the Hilton, yeah. um, hustle at swap meets and flea markets um, until they actually gave us a really good life. We all yeah. we all learned English. We we studied. We had uh, I got good jobs. Um, so I, so I realized in that year that I was here, that first year that there's no way I can go back to the United States without having my parents' retirement settled. Yeah. And that means that I needed to have people around me that are, that are motivated, that want to work, that want to, that are hungry. Um, so that's been, that's been the motivation for me to grow this business and take everyone on a fucking corporate trip every year. Yeah. Uh, everyone, th you know, sometimes I try to think and I'm like, well, my, my plan is to save money. But really, when we do shit together and we yeah. go out and do fun things, it makes us more money. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, sure. it creates more loyalty. It creates sure. more love. It creates more passion. Like you said, when you go on a trip and you come back, you're like fucking rejuvenated, yeah, right? Motivated. Right? Yeah. motivated. So... Um, so yeah, to answer your question, that was my, 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 my aha moment. So here. it's like 2014, you had this aha moment where it's like, and, and by well, the way, I can testify. Before 2014, because okay. it was like around when I met you. Yeah, um, that's 2011, 2012. Yeah, 2012-ish. I was like, we need to do something. Remember, I, I remember specifically talking in your apartment, which yeah. I hadn't moved into yet, um, and saying... <laughs> Yeah, we'll keep it going. And saying yeah. that we've Ooh. got to do something. We yeah. have to do something. We have to do something with well, marketing. Well, I think I think I think one of the big things with that though, and that's why I was saying it's necessity. Like his, he fell into it and whatever. I think like for us, I, I don't know about. I, I again, you can confirm or deny, but I think one of the things I was sort of like coasting. I had big pipe dreams and everything, but one of the things about Medellin is that man, you meet people, you go to their little, they invite you to their party or something like that. You go into their penthouse and you're like, you're like. Holy shit. It motivates this is how these right? people are living. And we're over here comfortable with our thousand dollar a month yeah. because we can buy 200 peso Cokes and, 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 and go out and party and buy a bottle. And then you see how people are really yeah, living. But, but, but I was happy. You like I'm, yeah, the, no. I'm, I'm the opposite though. Like, yeah. no, like that guys. material shit doesn't motivate yeah. me. Like uh, someone having a fucking Lambo or having a, 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 a Mercedes or BMW, that doesn't motivate me. That will never motivate me. Yeah. Literally what motivates me is knowing that when my parents hit 65, they will have everything paid for. Like that, that's like, for me, I can live in a normal apartment. I don't need to, I, but, right? I, but here's I don't need a here, here, You know what? By the way, the fucked up thing I heard today and saying that this show is all about being real and shit because I've heard Andrew say this for a very long time and he's, if he wanted to, he could probably buy them a property today. Right. Um, and so that that dream is sort of met. But you know what? The fucked up shit I heard today and I was listening because every morning I listen to like motivational shit on YouTube and they were talking about people working to retirement and something to think about even with your parents is the average lifespan after retirement. Do you know how long it is? More like 15 years. Seven years. So that's the fucked up shit is you that I think I think that's seven years. Seven years. So that's why for me. Cheers. And I think, I think like even living here and being around people that are digital nomads and opening coffee shops and starting the first organic juice business and Brent LED lighting being one of the top people on Google and working with NASA and all this stuff motivates me. It's like, and you know, he's off to Japan and this person's off to here and this person, you see their Facebook, they're off to there. I think for me, that's personally motivating because my friends in Canada... They do well for themselves, meaning they, they're, they're smart. They worked really hard. They've been working since um, teens. We we're all like call it middle class, even though I came from lower class and came up. But here you come here and it's like people are t they have a different way about them. They're like hungry. They're the ones that and I'm not talking about the scumbags. You know who you are that live here. But I'm talking about whenever we went out, somebody, whether it's a Brent or somebody was doing something that you're doing like, fuck, man. this guy's not just trying to go to his job and raise a family. He's trying to do some serious yeah, shit. Man. And it always made me think, and even when I was like, I started to photograph, I'm like, everybody began to, began to know me as the photographer, but they didn't know me as an intellect at all. 
right? It's like this guy has a camera and he, you know, he points the fucking, you know, the thing yeah. around. And then even like with me and with, with I was like, man, we got to do something like that's more impactful than taking a pretty photo of a girl, you know? Yeah. And, and I think like we all have that. So for you, it's like, it's, it's his family and stuff. But I think like one of the biggest things for people coming to Medellin, seeing that this is what, you know, this is supposed to be about is, is that I find like this is a place that really inspires you to hustle and do things because you go to any party anywhere when you start talking to people people are doing stuff here you know what yeah, I mean? yeah 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 if you like, go to like a party and i'm sure M michael you've been to party like penthouse parties yeah. from like guys at a bachelor party that here for a weekend and between all of them they're spending two thousand three thousand dollars and then they leave yeah but there are people that do that on a on a monthly basis yeah. almost yeah. a weekly basis yeah. almost that, a weekly yeah yeah weekly that basis. literally spending a thousand two thousand three thousand dollar like parties like and they don't glorify it and they yeah. don't care it's about nothing. it it's just yeah. part it's of the not, life they don't yeah. even mention the amount of money they yeah. spend they just yeah. and uh, i mean yeah so i guess my point is that w apart from 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 medellin or living in medellin yeah business and 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 meeting goals and and wanting to grow you, you can't have, if you have a material goal and that's your why, yeah. you're going to fail. Um, if, if that, I mean, and I don't I necessarily it, agree with that because you can hit that, you can get that goal. Like, I think you can make that goal. Well, I guess it, it depends on what you consider failure. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me retract that. So if you're, you're, your goal is material, you are probably going to come to an obstacle that's greater than your why and yeah. you're not going to continue. Or you're going to take it easy or are you going to yeah. hit a point where you're where you're coasting and you're cool but if your why is huge you're going to hit an obstacle you're going to hit a, a big pothole in your life and you're going to go right to do that because it won't matter if you slept on the floor if you ha were homeless it won't matter if you can't fucking uh eat that day you're going to go hustle and you're going to go try because your why is bigger than that little material thing that most yeah. that many people go for and and i get it you know when you're young sometimes your why is material yeah, yeah. because you see the flash you, especially with social media you yeah, see yeah. like facebook instagram all these people flashing money and like hey come work with me and do this mlm and you'll be a millionaire um but yeah the first thing that an mlm will teach you is like figure out your why you're not going to make it in this business if you're not going to if you don't have a huge why yeah um so that being said mm -hmm. joel what is your why? Man, I ask myself this <laughs> every single day, 24-7. I'm like, I'm ultra... Crisis? No, it's not, not at all. Um, I think I have... It's crazy when you have... You have, you have several whys, you know? Um, there, I, I've, 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 I've been in different phases um, economically with my family from... You know, my family come from, I would say, very poor to becoming middle class to now not owing anyone a cent the house is being paid off and and whatever and i think i have the opportunity um i think my parents were the ones that broke out from the typical life in their generation to give to do something a bit different and we, we, <laughs> and, we're, and we're in the and we're in the sort of like yeah, how many sport. shots have we taken so far don't even no, know we usually take about eight and 45 minutes to an hour so how many have uh, four six Five, six. Um, so, so yeah. So I think, I think, like they gave they. My parents were the type that, um, really try to give me opportunities and stuff. But I don't think my parents ever made, um, and we we have slightly different views on stuff, or or like at least approaches to things. Like my parents never really talked about wealth and 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 living in to excess and stuff like that. I grew up in a very like Christian household where it's like you know let us all be one and 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 you know be kind to others and stuff and which is great but then when you look at it and we can make you know cheers 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 hey cheers to your family <clears throat> cheers cheers the family mm. i think i think like sometimes for for me one of the biggest things for me in life is 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 freedom and being able to live in excess and share with people um and what I think that's why Andrew like mentioned even like the, the trip and stuff that we're going on and stuff that we keep sort of like building and we, we, we try to do things together is because um, when I was a kid, a lot of that stuff wasn't a reality, you know, like um, b 
being able to jump on a plane whenever I wanted or whatever was sort of like a dream, you know. And I think like for me, freedom and mobility is one very big thing. I, I strive really hard. My ability or my, my, my desire to work is to be able to get on a plane tomorrow. I remember my dad had um, was sick a few years ago and he was hospitalized and um, I didn't have legitimately did not have the thousand dollars to get on a plane and go see my dad who was in the hospital who was in a lot of pain and stuff and I know it would have meant tons for me to be there to support and I literally I've had several things like that where I felt like a chump like I'm like there's this little thing called money that holds you back from um, being able to be there and contribute to the people when they actually need it, right? Like Andrew talks about his parents in retirement stuff. I care about seeing my parents now, not when they're retired. Yeah. So, so right now it's like, I don't know if they're ever going to fucking retire, man. You know? So, so for me, it's like, I want to be able to get on a plane. If I hear tomorrow's my mom's birthday, to be quite honest, guys, this is my birthday's coming up next week. And I was thinking, man, I would love my dad's birthday. We're born on the same day. Really? You and we're your born dad? on the same day, and I'm like, man, I would love to just surprise my dad and fly in for three days, say what's up, say, man, I love you, and come back here. That's what drives me for money. I don't really care about material things. I like clothes. I love fashion. I love things like that. I like my nice little gym headphones, but I really don't give a shit about owning fancy cars or yeah, whatever. We yeah. talk about cars. We talk about, like, you know, the old car we see being sold in front here, a nice Jeep, how we can get it. So for me, what drives me and what's driven me here is not being in a position of helplessness. And once I feel helpless, I realize if I feel helpless and I was born with a silver spoon in comparison to others, you know, what the fuck are they feeling? And how, how can I help them get out of that position and teach them from all the shit that I've learned? I don't want to have my kids sort of call it suffer the same way I did. I want them to be able to like walk forward with, a, you know, be born with a bank account, work hard, but be able to use that bank account to generate wealth and generate things for other people. You know, that's what that's what pushes me. You know, I, w I was just like literally before we started this podcast, um, because we had a conversation at lunchtime, I literally Googled how to take my mom and I sent my brother and sister a message right before this. I'm like, man, I want to take my mom on a train trip. She always wants to see these train trips where you're driving through the mountains and the, you know, the blue water and the, you know, the whatever Alps or in Canadian Rockies. And I'm like, I can't wait till she's five years more because I don't even know if that exists. And so honestly, that's that's for me, that's what sort of drives me, man. That's what drives me. And I think I have a bigger opportunity to do that here than I do for more other than, than most other places. I had a great job in Canada and everything, and I can't complain. I was but you know rising through the ranks. I was making good money, but it didn't a allow this lifestyle and this mentality of like, there's more. You know, like there's like I can live in excess and give more to people than just have a job that pays me a hundred grand and have a nice car. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so it seems like your why is also tied to your family. It's it is. Very it, big. It, it, to family very, and friends. And friends. Much, I mean, yeah. like, and people in my circle. Yeah, people, yeah. Well, you know that. We keep a very tight well, circle. I mean, literally, we consider everyone that we're, we work with and, and, and really that are our friends. Yeah. Um, and those people know who they are uh, as basically family. Like, literally, yeah. if they need something, they know they can come to us. And, yeah. and if we need something, they know that. Yeah, we know that we can go to them. So well, we'll still kick their ass if they come with stupid shit. Because we don't, we don't really. Yeah, you know, I we're hate not stupid, into that shit. stupid shit. Um, so, Michael, uh, I guess we'll turn the question to you. What's what's your why? Um, same man. Your family? So, yeah, my father died when he was twelve. So, um, when I was twelve. <laughs> tequila's kicking in. <laughs> yeah, that tequila's yeah. kicking in, man. Michael died when he was twelve. Uh, <laughs> I'm still up on the. Pile so it's there. like I have a little sister. Um, my dad actually left my mom pregnant when she died. Really? When he died. Wow. Yeah. Man. So. Yo, can I ask this? Well, what do you, How do you die? My dad died of a diabetic coma. No like shit. it was medical negligence. Yeah. Wow. It was like medical had, negligence. Ne yeah. Like wow. the uh, we had the paramedics come three I'm times sorry, to our man. house. I'm sorry to hear that. I he didn't went know that. twice to the hospital, and they still they didn't even give him a fucking piss test just to see if his yeah, sugar was okay. Wow. That's it was in, just in the, the U.S. In the U.S. In the U.S. Why are you touching my glass and putting it? I don't know. Yeah. Yep, we, we knew it was coming. It we were prepared. Oh, wait, hold on. Flippy doesn't have his. I feel like my speech is starting to get a little oh, slurred now. That's what happens, man. That's, that's what, what happens. happens. So, yeah. Yeah. so, okay, so you were saying that uh, your dad died when you were 12, uh -huh. and, and you've got your little sister. 
Yeah. Um, so it's like it, it's I'm in a weird position also because it's like my my older sister. She's she's only one year older than me, and she's balling right now. Columbia. Really? What do you mean? Yeah, she works for a call center and she works for like a company and they they make software. Does she also speak English fluently? Of course, but she actually looks like she's American. She's like, she has like blue eyes, red hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's white as oh, you've seen some pictures of her. Mm. Yeah, they're basically like me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much exactly like you. Yeah, blue shirt. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Cool. But so she she is the head of a team that does the support for this software. And so they have like some clients or there's some big companies. And so I think the software is like some kind of database that they have. Uh, it works for databases. And she's balling. She's making more than a grand a month here. Like with a, a normal Colombian company. Wow. Yeah. That, so that's a lot because that's yeah. like th uh, over 3 million pesos a month. Exactly. Yeah, well, I think yeah. we, need to, we need to really talk about what that means though because he's saying balling. I mean, balling is... Balling as in like, in my, like we don't pay rent because... So my current situation is me and my older sister, we help out my family. So I don't think we've talked about this much actually. So in my house, like it's my two grandparents, yeah. an aunt, um, my mom, my two sisters and me. How, so how many and I'm the only one that has like a room how by many himself. People, how many people in, in your that house? is two grandparents, my aunt, my two sisters, my mother and me. So that's seven and, of and us. And what neighborhood is this in? This is Pilarica. So it's, uh, we no, live no, like right next- like a rich battery? <laughs> Pilarica is actually, actually one of its battery. It's, it's actually we're up to Estracto five now or four. It's been, it's been going up. It's actually like one of the well, nicer. What does that mean, Pilarica? I don't know. I don't rich battery, anything. man. A pila. Uh, okay, or Pilarica. hurry, rich. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Shit. You're right. No, yeah. it's definitely got to be some Spanish conquistador's last name. Pilarica. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, obviously, yeah, yeah. Pilarica will chop your fucking heads off. Ba ba back in the day, like eighties, uh, early nineties, it used to be the poblado. In, like, oh, really? Pilarica like, rich, used to be. Rich people live in Pilarica, not well, in Well, and also that whole area. What's that whole area called? Uh, Robledo. Robledo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Robledo, yes. Actually, Robledo was the first to discover Medellin, if I remember my history correctly. I thought Robledo was a fish. <laughs> that's a Robledo. Oh, All right. So, anyway, Robledo. you're yeah. saying that you've so got pretty a much like my, my dream right now, my, my, my number one dream, and I'm pretty sure my, my older sister shares this, is. We want my older sister to be able to do whatever the fuck she wants. Younger. My, young, my younger sister, sister yes. Because yeah. she's only 14. She turns mm -hmm. 15 next year. I mean, like she can do with do it without out of necessity. As in, like, if she wants to go to Europe and study, if she wants to go to the U.S. She, can, she, right. is a, she was born in the U.S. Yeah, so yeah. she is... Oh, she's she, got that U.S. passport. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, if she wants to go to the U.S. and study, we want to be able to, like, support her in that. Yeah. She wants to go to Europe. She wants Does to she speak to English? She speaks English. Her first language was English. Yeah, but I mean, she was. It's small. gotten worse, obviously, yeah. because now, now it's she's like complete paisa. Yeah, like as an English teacher, I see her development, and it's like her Spanish now is better than her English. But her English is like if you hear her speak, she still sounds like a like a white girl from California. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so you're you're so it sounds like all we're all very, it's very similar. similar. Yeah, very it's our family, family oriented. Yeah. So I got a very important question. So you got like. So it's about eight people in your in your house, right? Yeah, seven. So exactly what seven. what do you do when you want to fuck a girl in your house? Like so in my house, that's the thing. Like, in my house, do you bring her? So I usually don't bring women to my house. Well, I mean, yeah, unless I mean, it's a stable girlfriend right, so I've let, had for a few months. Let me months. So How do you feel about your mother, and how do you fuck girls in the house? <laughs> so. Yeah, like no, but seriously, like like I'm thinking, like yo, yeah. you know, you, I like to bring a girl home sometimes, yeah. you know, like you know. Three in the bed. Well, that's the thing. The like that, the, the weird thing is, like my mother's like. Um, you yeah, know, I'm you like I'm helping out in the people. house, and so she's like, "This is your house. Don't worry. Uh, you could bring a woman if you want." What? Um, not yeah. my mother. But like she's like, but my mom is like, my mom is young as fuck. My mom's not even fifty yet. My mom's like oh, forty-five. Okay. What are you trying to say about my mother? Well, mom, mom, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying your age. Yeah, she mom, doesn't like me to say like her age. Not even fifty. Your mom's ninety. Wait, so like, like so, but my, so you, you know what I mean? Though my mom is young as fuck. Like if you look at my mom, like when I have a full beard and I go bald, like people think my mom is my girlfriend. Like me. Yeah, exactly. When I'm looking like you, oh, they're going to be like, my mom. mom. Is my, yeah, exactly. Is that, is that why you never bring your mom around Felipe? I will not bring my mom around Felipe. Oh, okay. He's a season. Mom, you will dude. never meet Felipe He's a in creepy dude. Never. He's a creepy I'm sorry. Dude. I didn't mean to fuck a girl. I mean yeah. to make, make love to <laughs> sweet, a woman. Sweet, sweet. You want to make love to a sweet, yeah. sweet woman? With, 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 with seven so people. So what I do is... So, oh, so wait, wait. How many bedrooms? Three bedrooms. I'm the only one that sleeps alone. You sleep alone? I thought you like women. 
I do. <laughs> wait, 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 you, wait, wait, wait. You say you sleep alone like Harry Potter style and need a broom in a broom closet, or you sleep in an actual like an like an actual room? Okay, I don't, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm yeah, exactly. yo, so, fucking, yeah. So this is real talk, though. Yeah. We gotta make a fucking plan for you guys to buy like a eighteen bedroom mansion. Well, actually, that's the thing, though. Like, cause, cause like my mother has nine brothers and sisters. They're trying to move in? <laughs> and But that's the thing. Like, I respect my mother a lot for this because oh, no. she's the only... Like, we bought this house um, back in what? Psh, way before 2011. Like, 2008, 2007. And so, my grandparents, they lived in Castilla, which is one of the yeah. more sketchy neighborhoods in Medellin. I wouldn't say sketchy because I chill there a lot. But it's had a lot of bad rep. Yeah, it is so, sketchy. Um, <laughs> it is sketchy, yeah. yeah. So, she was the one that took about... Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. So, she was the one... That, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Shout out to Diego, baby Diego. Baby Diego, wait a second. We will see you soon. Let's do this, let's do this. Like, we'll wait, do wait, this wait, shot. wait, wait, wait. We'll do this shot give me that baby yeah, Diego. Honor of baby class. Diego. So, let's back it up because... You are a G, a legend already. He doesn't even know. He's not even... He doesn't even know he's a legend. Before the good times end on this podcast, if it ever does you know we get killed by one of you freaks yeah. out there that don't like the yeah. way that we talk like using words like fucking stuff um okay. we got to talk about and we got we got felipe who is like Flippy. literally going yeah. through withdrawals right now he's that going needs through withdrawals. his I cup see him to be sweating full. over there so yo, let, let me let me take a, a, a moment here <laughs> Wait, when are you guys gonna get felipe like we, a headset so he can get, comment like jamie from the joe rogan show uh, like, well, how the hell we need also need like a, one of them robot uh, vacuum Chicken? cleaners. What are they called? Uh, Roomba. Roomba that comes from zooming over with his like little a, with a shot drink. glass. With a drink. Yeah, yeah. He's over there like doing like this. Damn, I already I drank my shot. Sorry. Or a midget. Hold on, wait. Here's the baby Diego, hey, Kyle, baby Diego. and Angel, I have to do and this again. one of our great friends who you'll meet on this podcast. Yeah. Just had a baby yesterday. Kyle, uh, baby shout burrito, out to Kyle baby too. burrito. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. man. So, baby Diego. Cheers. I already drank. All right. It. So, uh, <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> Um, that, yeah. that, that that your mom has nine brothers and sisters, and they yeah, like my mom is the one, like uh, me, my sister, and my mom were the one that support my grandparents and this other aunt. So it's like, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting situation because I know like my grandparents are very old. My 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 grandpa is probably like 80, 80 So 86. Michael, why are you ignoring the questions about how you have sex with? Seven oh wait, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're, you're trying right. to tell them about So I don't have sex age. at home. Okay. So here in Medellin, we usually okay. have. Um, in motels, it's usually three hours. You don't have to stay the night. So you try so to say that Colombian do. guys take... have more stamina than American guys because on no, the movies no, no. they pop no. off in like five. But seven, you know what I mean? Hours. It's Estadia. Uh, no. What is it called? Yeah, they're love motels. Love motels. Yeah, they're love motels. Three hours. Yeah, yeah. I, I never heard about that in the U.S. Do they have that in the U.S.? Yeah, they have them. <laughs> they're called. I never heard that in no, the U.S. But like truckers yeah, yeah. use those, right? I don't know. No, but here they're nice. Here, like they're they have themes. You can be like in the Amazon. I had only had one experience in one. Yeah, they have them. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, so if you do meth, you know about motels. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you heard that, right? If you do <laughs> meth, you, you know, know about, about can motels. That, can we need a quote? We need we a need quote it, section bro. on our website. You got to put this on a quote. We, we, yeah, yeah, we got so, the quote. On a yeah, shirt, so, on a t-shirt. So, yeah, I know. I've been to sex motels here. They're awesome. They, they have like themed yeah. ones where it'd be like the Hollywood room and then it'd be like the fucking... Right over here, I'm still trying to lose my virginity. Yeah. But, but I always feel like... I, I always feel like... Ugh, like yeah, There's yeah, been other people's fluids up in here. Yeah, like, it's so. weird. It's weird sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because if you take her home, yeah. she's going to meet the family and then it's but, pretty much like you're married. Yeah. yeah. But it's, oh, it's weird. Smart. It's weird mostly because my grandparents, they say they don't care, but it's like they, they look at me and I feel like they judge me, so I, I try not to. How do you know it's not their like one exciting moment they have? Like Yeah, you know, they're watching they Novella. All day. It they, might be, it might be, but yeah, yeah. I, I would. I don't want to be that that type of reason for example. Yeah, I feel know? weird too. Yeah. So, yeah. so you take them to motel. So basically, I think pretty much at the end of the year, I'm moving out. So you know, I think at the end of the year, I'll have enough money to, to, to help my yourself. mother. Yeah. And to I'm gonna home. give you a bit of advice. Don't move out. You told me and Andrew earlier in this episode that you plan to travel, stay, yeah. save your money, move out when you also, come back. Also, yeah. But, wait, but the thing is, like, if you look at it objectively, like where I would live. It would almost be the same. But couldn't you just like take some shrooms and pretend you moved out? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, but wait, wait. Oh, hold on. But actually, this this is like, um, we're trying to think because we did a, a little like thing on our Facebook asking people on our Facebook. I sound like I'm like 90. Um, about what, what you want to hear on from this post. <laughs> on, on my space book. And honestly, <laughs> people coming, guys, if you're going to come visit here, uh, a lot watch of our guys, podcast watch our podcast, yeah, but watch realize it. that it, a girl, 
you can't go over to her place unless like she's an older girl and she's already a even if she's older yeah like she could be 30 and yeah. it's very possible that they live with their parents yeah. because of this yeah. listen to the real life situation yeah. it's not like yeah. they yeah. choose to. exactly it's, it's because just, they're, and it's a lot of cult, it's very cultural here. no and it's like a responsibility exactly like if my parents lived here exactly I would not live with them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but for example, like my my two uncles came to, yeah, to yeah. visit. They're literally both sleeping in one bed in our in, apartment in, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I want them to be there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I want them to be here with me, and yeah, yeah. I think it's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. But uh, guy or girl, if yeah, a girl's so, coming here and you think that the guy, for example, you know, you know, I'm not judging the way <laughs> what you do. You went out to a party, you met a guy, you want to, you know, you just got want to go and kiss. And touch just a little bit, um, and so 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 you want to go back to his place. And you can't go back to the hostel. You can't go back to their place. Yeah. No, you're not going to Michael's place. You're not coming to back my place. And you're not going. You're not going. You're not going to Felipe's place because yeah. a whole lot of dirty shit goes. Uh, dirty you know, shit. You don't want to go there. And Felipe Felipe's says, got a king size. I've been on your bed. He's, yeah. been, <laughs> <laughs> he's been there, done that already. Motels are an actual acceptable thing in Medellin, and everybody does it growing up here. You don't take people back to the Catholic household. And the funny Dirty. thing is, the decent ones start at 30,000 pesos. That's Wait, 10 30, bucks. Are you, was 10 Michael bucks. here to plug Why motels? Bucks. Why are you whispering? Who are you whispering to? This is top secret information. Not $10. 30,000 30, 30, 30, 30, pesos about? Uh, an hour? For the three hours. For, oh, the, for the three yeah. hours. They literally have billboards. But not, not your average American is not going to, or like foreigner is not going to know that. Yeah, yeah they upcharge. I would upcharge. Yeah, they're going to be looking at booking.com. Oh, 100 Booking.com to a motel. Yeah, yeah. He's in the club looking at that. That's yeah. fucked up Don't shit. Go to They're not even thinking about the three hours. They only think about like, oh, I have to spend the night. So like, if someone's looking for a love motel, like uh, for the night, what would they put into Google? Oh man, there's actually an app for that. I forgot what shit. it's called. Yeah, man, it's love only motels. For, yeah, it's only love motels. I forgot. Man, it's managing so something. Smart, it's something man. like that. It's like why did we think that. of that shit? Why are we working so uh, hard in life? We gotta do no, something. No, and the like prices are crazy. Look. There's one in um, in Itagui. That's only fifty five thousand pesos, and it's like um, they have the sex swing. You can yo, but they're weird, man. Oh, people, I don't know if you've been to them. Bro, I mean, they got a, lot... a jacuzzi. No, they got a little man. Bar last shot. Yo, it's last like shot. it's Let's like do, like, last shot. do the yeah. last shot as last we talk shot. about this. Last but shot. love motels, right. man. I mean, so, we gotta talk. So well, well I guess we'll we'll, we got, we'll we got another episode. We got episodes. On the love we, I, I mean, shit, yeah. we got so much to talk. Yo, but the love motels. just but anyway, Michael, it's been it's been awesome having you on. Thank you for being with Red Door. Wait, you've been with Red Door the longest. I think so, yeah. yeah. Longest the begin- employee. Since the beginning, man. And he's the youngest. And Although he comes to work less than anybody else. So it's fucking fucking <laughs> Cheers to that. I can work from home, though. That's the important Bullshit. thing. Bullshit. Drink that shit, With man. With 10,000 people living in your house? How you working? Yeah. Um, but working, anyway. I'm, wor- I'm working from home t- today, guys. <laughs> yeah, grandma right about grandpa, that as well. like, sitting beside him. Like, yeah. 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 Well, anyways, <laughs> it was awesome learning about your story. Le- Stuff that I didn't know actually, uh, which was very interesting. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, uh, get on the on Spotify. We're on iTunes. Are we we're on GitHub. On, we're not we're on, on GitHub. Everything, bro. Everything, <laughs> everything. Uh, everything. We're on everything. We're not, yeah, uh, Google, Google, Google Podcast, yeah. um, iTunes. So make sure to follow us, comment. Oh, like the Facebook page. We've yeah, been like getting, the like, Facebook. Yo, yeah. and you guys better know something. You guys are making us rich. We have officially hit one dollar. Oh, oh, fuck! Why no, you gotta be so are, sarcastic? Sorry, pipe, shit, pipe dream. The other no, days I heard dream. like sixty cents. We, we hey, thanks to you people that tune into this crazy, stupid shit. We're at fifty cents. Oh wait. You know, <laughs> We are I didn't have 50 beer. cent. Now Yo, I have 50 your cent. Your parents can retire. <laughs> You're going to retire off this 50 cent. Yeah. 50 cent. Yeah. Yeah. I need commission you know on that. We need to throw There's off. There's three of us. I need one no. third. I need one third. <laughs> we Just so you know. We can't yeah. even buy Just that so Coke you know. that Andrew was yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Back in 2009. <laughs> we can't buy Giovanni a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. Yo, but wait. But wait. We got to put up. We got to put up the PayPal. If you like this shit, donate so we can stay alive. Nah, Guess how much? We, we, we don't need your goddamn donations except yeah, to yeah. buy these bottles <laughs> every time. Or mushrooms. Yes. Or mushrooms. mushrooms and little t-shirts. Yeah. Real small. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a great one. Be safe. Be safe, guys.